we're done with composition. We're done with the basic model. So in some sense, now we can, let's not take a break yet, but uh, we, we, now we can get to work. Because now we can actually try to start modeling things. OK, try to maybe have fun. OK, so, so, uh, uh, so, so, so let's uh, uh, see how we, we model things. And maybe the first thing that I want to model is, uh, is, is corruptions okay, that we didn't do before. Um, so, um, so, so, so I'm going to do corruptions. So corruption, the idea to do corruptions, I'm going to kind of encode them as protocol instructions, saying like now, anyway, the adversary here is sending messages to, uh, uh, to, to, to the protocol, to the guys, right? So um, I'm going to say that I'm going to define these protocols to be such that when they get, say, if I want to model kind of Byzantine corruption, so whenever the party gets uh, a message from the adversary that says, uh, 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 can you please be corrupted? Then I say, sure. And then I say whatever, I, you know, I tell the adversary whatever it wants to say, to, to hear. And I, everything that I have, and start following the adversary instructions, for instance. Uh, so how, technically, how you want to do it, because the, the protocol is kind of, the, the kind of somebody else wrote the protocol, you're just analyzing it, uh, um, right? You don't want to have such code in the real code that's running in the system, it's just for analysis. Uh, so kind of like we do a wrapper around real protocols. Uh, say I have a protocol that I'm going to say, let's call it a, a shell of a protocol which is kind of something that I add to the protocol as part of the, uh, as, as an analyst. And I'm not really analyzing the protocol that is running in the system. I'm analyzing this protocol plus a little subroutine that gets activated every time it gets a message. And you know, it does whatever I want for modeling with purposes. Uh, so I will call it a shell. Uh, and uh, we need to do some simple things there. Uh, so for instance, this shell is going to do uh, the corruptions. Uh, so, so, um, uh, so whenever, say, if I want to model Byzantine corruptions, which is standard kind of corruptions, uh, then whenever I get a message from, from the adversary, please corrupt it yourself, then uh, the shell says okay. And well, the first thing the shell has to do is to uh, send a message to the environment that it's corrupted. Um, and so kind of, again, it's a technical uh, uh, message, but it has to be sent. Because why? Because uh, uh, if you don't do it, then uh, 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 right, if you just uh, tell the adversary everything, then this notion of, of emulation will be not very meaningful because then the simulator will be able, you know, will just simulate everything by just corrupting everybody, learning everything. Or, so, 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 uh, uh, so you don't want to do that. So essentially you kind of say, I want to, in order to make this notion of simulation meaningful, I want to write programs. Again, it's, it's a convention. I want to write uh, shell programs that kind of like tell the environment when everybody, whenever somebody is corrupted uh, so that uh, the environment knows. Uh, so remember the game. So in the, in the real execution, the environment is controlling the adversary. So it knows who is corrupted because it did the corruption itself. In like in the in, in the ideal model in the simulation, the, there is this simulator here. The environment doesn't con, does not control, and he can do whatever it wants. So we want to uh, uh, restrict what it can do. Um, so um, so so we notify the environment the environment, and then we can t we can do different things if you want to model different types of corruptions. So if it's a bit of corruption, then we're going to uh, uh, tell the adversary everything. It just follow the instructions of the adversary. If it's an honest both use uh, corruption, then we can do the appropriate things. So maybe tell the adversary everything, but continue running the code, OK, as, as instructed, because honest both use. If this is a fail stop corruption, then we can, we'll do whatever, you know, we'll just stop. Uh, uh, but never the adversary tells us to, and that's it. We're not going to tell the adversary anything. We can talk about transient corruptions. It's corruptions that actually, uh, after some time, the adversary goes away, and we uh, and we, be st we stop being controlled by it. Um, we can also talk about uh, uh, about erasures, right? So we want to erase code and not tell the adversary things that we kind of erased if yeah, we model erasures. Um, 
And we can talk about uh, leakage, right? So we can actually, in fact, do things like uh, um, capture more intricate things like uh, side channel attacks or leakage uh, uh, by way of uh, this kind of leakage corruption. So, so maybe the adversary uh, can send us, uh, uh, well, it depends on, on how, what kind of leakage you want to model. So the adversary is going to send us some function uh, that we're going to apply to our local state and tell the adversary if you want to model some arbitrary function or something else, some noisy function, whatever kind of leakage that you want to model or such an attack you want to model, we can actually model it, right? The adversary give us a function, some noisy function, we can, and we, uh, we're going to just evaluate it and give it back to the adversary. So we can capture leakage, okay? And we can do other things. We can uh, uh, capture uh, 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 kind of coercion attacks. Uh, uh, obviously, kind of somebody comes with a gun and tells us something, and maybe we, 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 we want to cheat, but we want to look like as if we didn't cheat. And we, we, can, we can capture whatever your imagination wants to capture in this way, kind of types of attack. Um, so one thing to notice here that uh, uh, you want to, uh, uh, um, sometimes you want to model um, aggregate information in the sense that uh, you want to model um, so some corruptions make sense or are more powerful when they apply to kind of an aggregate of machines together. For instance, if I'm talking about leakage, uh, then, and I have like a, a machine or a processor or some physical machine that runs multiple uh, processes on that machine, uh, then the leakage uh, would be uh, applied to, you know, to everything together that runs the machine, not individually at each process, right? And if I have different processes and each one of them is, is, is uh, like say part of a different protocol instance and something, so they are separate in my model, I want to allow uh, in my model, the adversary to kind of apply a function or some, some leakage or across a number of, uh, of instances. So I need to be able to model that, but we can model it in, in, in natural ways, right? So say some days some machines talk to each other, they kind of, there's an aggregator that collects information from machines and then does leakage on the, ag on the aggregate or, or, or something like that. Um, so this is the kind of, again, things that, that, that you can do and actually have been done and been used in different, in different works to, to corrupt those things. 